Hey everybody, today we're going to start to really look at patterns and art and why they're so entrancing. And actually this really started um, in my brain in Thanksgiving because uh, while we were in Marfa it snowed. And the snowflakes were so big, you guys, I could see patterns in them and it was just magical. So um, I've been wanting to do a snowflake or a pattern unit for a while and um, so today we are going to do kind of uh, beginning thoughts on pattern. So um, I wanna to talk to you also about the history of pattern making. So patterns in art, pattern making, patterns that are used to convey a visual message have been around since the time of cave paintings. So in Lacoe, France, in the, inside those caves, there are patterns created by marks made by really um, ancient artists with their hands, marks, uh, patterns created with lines. Uh, it's really amazing. So we're going to look at some more modern versions of that. And the first artist we're going to start with who really revolutionized how we think about pattern as a visually interesting and enticing um, situation is M.C. Escher. So this is his work and it's a flock of geese. And as you can see, like the, the white geese are passing this way and the blue geese are going this way. And it's really about an interlocking pattern. So that's what this is called, when one pattern hooks into another. So let's talk about where we see interlocking patterns because we see them all over the place. It's really common and I've got some examples for you. Look, this is just a Ziploc bag from Ikea. Here is an interlocking pattern. It's the same feeling that you have here. So I want you to be able to see that. Another example of interlocking pattern that a lot of you guys see could be like grids or plaids or blocks. I'm gonna show you the front of this box. This grid, although there's different things in each grid, this grid is a form of interlocking or a locking pattern, What a pattern that's the same all the way throughout. Uh, another version of an interlocking pattern that you see a lot of is in quilts. So my good friend Marissa is like my quilt inspiration and I started on a quilt at the beginning of this whole COVID lockdown situation and I'm going to show you guys my quilt or part of it if I can get it up here. So I did an interlocking pattern of only triangles you guys and it came out i'm pretty happy with it hold on let me get this thing out check it out that's only triangles isn't that cool so it's really fun the center it comes to a point ding comes to a point uh and then the rest it kind of travels out from there but this is a perfect example of an interlocking pattern of triangles. Another way of doing an interlocking pattern would be to do bands of pattern. And you kind of see that here, bands of pattern. So another version of that is sometimes you see Charlie Brown or things that are kind of Charlie Brownish. Here's a stencil I made. This is an interlocking pattern stencil. So you could stencil this vertically. You have this interlocking pattern or horizontally, doesn't matter it's still that zigzag interlocking pattern. And that's one of the most common types of pattern making is when it interlocks or it's sequential. So um, MC Escher is a perfect example of it. Another way to look at pattern making would be to do a spiral. So this is a pattern that begins and then spirals around. And as it's spiraling, the shape is moving. So we have it kind of very vertical here so you can see, and then it starts to become horizontal as it's going around. Also, the way they use color is really fabulous. Look at the difference. So in the Escher, it's bands, it's basically bands or lines of color. Like in the Charlie Brown stencil, it's bands of color. On this one, it's really interesting because there's a different color palette from one side to another. So it's pretty sophisticated. And we're gonna talk more about how we can use color with pattern to really make it pop. So last but not least, I'm gonna show you the work of an incredible artist. Her name is Yayoi Kusama. 
She is an incredible installation artist who uses patterns, specifically the pattern of dots, to kind of create these environments. Um, they're really incredible, and I've actually seen and been immersed in, in two of her environments. And uh, I'm gonna put a picture of my mom and I in front of kind of her iconic, one of her iconic shapes, which is, look at this room, isn't that amazing? Talk about changing your perspective. So this is art that and pattern that overtakes your whole space. Um, here's a, a space that includes a, one of her her melons. They're kind of famous. She's known for these melon forms. And whoops, I have a really great picture of my mom and I um, and standing in front of one of these melon forms before we went into another installation of hers. So it's a pretty great moment. Uh, but I love that pattern just takes over the whole space. And that's something to realize as an artist, pattern is so entrancing. It can transform a space because after a while you lose sense of walls. You don't have a sense of where's the wall? Where is this ball shape? It's really, really changing how you your depth is perceived or how you move through a a space while being surrounded by this. I have a really good picture, hold on, of her, of her with, um, with the, whoops, I'm so wiggly today, I don't know why. Okay, here she is. Look, she's wearing a dress that she put this pattern on in inside of a room. I just love it. I'm crazy about it, and I think it's really another way to like just next level pattern. It's also very visually impactful. So in the same way that this is visually impactful, this has the same kind of feeling as well as the same feeling as this piece. So here you have three different examples of how pattern can really be powerful and strong and uh, bold and just take our minds to a different place. So get ready. We're about to start on some fun pattern work. So when we think about patterns, it's important to remember that patterns and when our eye recognizes patterns, it's something that attracts us and kind of keeps us visually interested in looking at something. So that's why we see patterns all around in design, um, especially with signage, you see a lot of patterns. But what I want you to do today is you're going to need a white piece of paper. Uh, you can use a Sharpie marker. You can use uh, just a, a pen. You can use a pencil, doesn't matter, but you need something to mark on this because we're gonna be doing some tracing to create pattern. So look around your house or um, if you're in the classroom, I provided a whole bunch of shapes for you to choose from and you're gonna choose one shape, but I'm gonna go over looking at shapes and choosing the shape that you might wanna use. So for the most part, finding a round shape to trace is it's pretty easy. You could use a bowl or a lid for a round shape. I found a really cool oval shape, and this was that, remember that egg cup from when I was dyeing eggs? So this is a beautiful oval shape. Um, also, don't forget, sometimes you're looking at an object like this, and you're like, what can I trace on this? But look at the bottom. Here we have this really cool octagon at the bottom of this that you could trace around. Also, think about square shapes. They're all over the place. Here's a box top. That's perfect for like a, a nice repeating square. Also, you might have something that has like, it's square, but it's kind of slightly rounded. Like this box has like a, a large rounded square. Oh, you could have an irregular square. Look at this. This is a square form, but it's slightly irregular. Has like a curve in this line with it. That's kind of an interesting little shape right there. You might even have, look, here's a crystal. Here's a really cool, you know, piece of rock crystal. But this has got a really nice um, parallelogram. That's what this is. That you could draw on here. You could draw around that. Also, finding stuff that's triangular. Let me tell you, that's a trick right there. I couldn't, so let's talk about irregular objects. So triangular shapes are kind of tricky. Here's a Toblerone, you know I ate this whole chocolate. But you could be tracing it the long way for like a long kind of rectangle. That's what you would get out of one direction, a long rectangle, or you could trace this end to get a triangle. You could trace around a pair of scissors. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Oh, here's a magnifying glass. Same thing, you could trace around this for an irregular shape. I also found this top from a butter dish. That's kind of a neat shape in there. 
can trace around that. So we're gonna start by choosing an object and tracing it. I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can trace it. And the first one that I'm gonna use, oddly, now I can't find it in this pile, but um, I traced around, oh, it's this. It's this octagon. So what you do is when you're tracing something, you lay it flat on a surface and you trace around it. You wanna hold your ob object still and trace around it. So I'm gonna trace a couple times around this to get um, what I want. And I'm gonna show you how this looks. I'm just adding to what I traced before, but I'm doing basically a, even though it's on a diagonal, it's a sequential, a sequenced style pattern where one fits into the other. And I've just gone across, even though, I mean, I could have gone straight on the paper, you know, much like this, but for some reason I wanted to give it some, make it dynamic, so I went diagonal on the paper. I could, I could stop my composition here or I could just continue to add more blocks. Uh, more of these, not blocks, more of these octagons onto this one. That's an example of that. So the next thing I picked up was this oval, kind of eggish oval shape. And I just went crazy and traced this over and over again. And I was really inspired by this piece. This piece kind of took my, my imagination for that oval. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do something that it's not exactly like this but it's gonna kind of speak to the feeling that we have in this one. So you're gonna see, I traced this oval, this piece over and over again, and I came up with this. So here's a pattern that is one shape after another, but it's placed on here kind of like as if it's curving along. It almost looks like a slinky if you opened up a slinky, but, um, I just try to make it as dynamic and interesting on the page. So when you're doing these, you know, it might be a good idea to do more than one. You know, do a couple of these so you can see different ways of and different shapes of how you can kind of really compose within your paper. Then I started looking for regular shapes. So I'm like, hey, here's this pair of scissors. I'm gonna trace around this and I started to actually use this pair of scissors. I started to trace around this pair of scissors and you can kind of see, there you go. I just traced around it and this is irregular. So this now becomes more the feeling of the dots and stuff. We'll just let that swing that way. Um, oops, can we? I guess not. All right. The dots that we have in Kusama's artwork. So it's just randomly placed onto the piece of paper. But I'm still composing, I'm still thinking about how this looks, whether it should be a vertical or a horizontal. What are your thoughts? How do you think I composed this? I actually did it as a vertical. So this is a vertical composition. But this one's definitely a horizontal. So think about that also, how can you view? It could go either way. So think about that, patterns, especially with pattern and repeat pattern, you can really um, decide or change the orientation of the artwork depending on what looks best to you, to your eye, how the pattern works best. Lastly, I was uh, thought I was done drawing these and then I went back over to the house and I, start, I saw this butter dish cover and I'm like, I wanna do that, I wanna do a composition of that. So this one I did completely random using the butter dish and I also kind of really enjoyed going off of the plane. Some of these don't go all the way. Sometimes you have a whole one like here, but it was really interesting and fun and it became an all over pattern. So look at the difference here. This is all over, taking over the whole piece of paper this one is kind of definitely composed. It has a rhythm and movement throughout the paper. This one is traversing, going across the paper. And then lastly, we have another one that's kind of friendly to this one. So these are kind of similar, even though they're different um, shapes that I traced. So that's what I want you to do today. I want you to choose one or more shapes 
but I only want you to trace one shape at a time on your paper. So you have to be really thoughtful about it. You're not mixing this shape and this shape on the paper. You're using one shape traced over and over again like this, traced over and over again on the paper. That's one shape. That's that piece. Here's this piece. One shape traced over and over again, okay? It's important, the reason I'm having you do just one shape is I really want you to understand all the different ways you can compose with that shape, just singularly. Here we go. And you would have never have guessed this shape for the bottom of this. I, it just, I wouldn't have looked at this and said, oh, it's that. It took me a minute actually to remember. So keep drawing. Draw your shape over and over again. Enjoy yourself and have fun with it. Remember, this is about pattern, it's about playing, it's about enjoying yourself, and really seeing where the patterns can take you. How can you create a composition that's visually interesting to you? So this is the first part of our project, and the second part, we're gonna be working on color in the next video. So I'll see you then. Have fun, bye.